hope I'm in the middle of the frame right now because I'm filming on my phone and I couldn't get it to mirror to my MacBook. So I'm using an actual mirror behind it to make sure that it's actually good. I don't know, but I guess we'll see in post production. It's your girl Lulu and welcome to my channel. Yes, I am finally saying it and yes, I am finally doing it after talking about creating my YouTube channel for years now. But I guess 2021 was my year. So here I am. Here I am doing it. Yes. Anyways, I am super excited to be sharing this video with you guys because I feel like it's the perfect time to make it and to put it out there because it's 2021. It's the beginning of the year and everyone's making resolutions and goals and wanting to eat healthier, to be healthier. And I feel like I have some pretty good tips that could help you to achieve that. So if you're interested in learning more, stick around and make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to show my channel some support. Thank you, greatly appreciate it. As you can see in the title of this video, I'm going to be sharing 10 tips with you guys on how to start eating healthier. So everyone has their reasons for why they're wanting to eat healthier, whether it's to lose weight, to clear up your skin, to improve your energy levels, your digestive system, your immune system. There's just like so many reasons why people are starting to eat healthier because they realize the value in doing so. So if that is interesting to you and you are a person who struggles with eating healthier and all you want to do is eat healthier, then stick around because girl or boy, whoever's watching this video i totally understand how difficult it is to eat healthier especially if you didn't grow up eating in such a way so i will be sharing some pretty great tips that'll help you guys to transition into such an eating lifestyle yes let's get into it to know that I am in no way a certified nutritionist, dietitian, or certified in anything really. So the tips that I'm sharing with you guys are just some of the things that I feel that have worked for me into transitioning into eating healthier and I just feel like they would help you as well because they worked for me. If they don't work for you then you just have to tweak it and find what works for you. Tip number one is to drink more water. Yes, I know, I do sound like a broken record because everyone says this like a million times over, is to drink more water. But I feel like it's such an underrated tip that people don't really believe how much of a great impact water or increasing your water intake has on your body. No, I don't want to get all scientifical with you guys, but you know, just bare minimum, is that our bodies are made up of about 60% water. So meaning that our bodies need water in order to function, for our organs to function, for our cells to reproduce, for our joints to be lubricated, and for our digestive system to be working properly. So. It is important that we drink water. Just like one of the biggest ways to kickstart eating healthier is to ensure that your body is properly hydrated. Starting with drinking more water, that is when you can feel like almost an automatic difference, like an instant difference in how you feel. And I feel like a lot of people want to jumpstart eating healthier by going down much more difficult paths. They jump right into like the big stuff. They jump into like, oh, I need to eat more salads. Oh, I need to go on a 30 day green juice cleanse or mm, I need to follow a paleo or a strict diet kind of thing. And I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with that. There's people who do those things and it works out for them. But for the majority who struggle with eating healthy at all, I feel like it's very important to start with the basics and just work your way up to those bigger goals. 
in order for our bodies to function, we need water. We need to make sure that we're replenishing our bodies with the water that we've lost throughout the day. To transition yourself smoothly into eating healthier, it's important to start with the basics. Drinking more water. I understand that this is a big one for a lot of people, especially if you're used to drinking like sweet stuff all day long or soda and juices and things like that because your taste buds are just used to that. But you don't realize is that those things are not hydrating your body whatsoever. Your body is craving water and instead you're just drowning yourself in caffeine and sugars and all of these things that your body doesn't really need. So if drinking more water is a little difficult for you, I feel like there are a couple of things that you can do to achieve this goal. Number one is to make sure that you always have water within view. Like I always have my hydro flask around me or, or I have literally like 10 water bottles lined up on my bed so that when I wake up in the morning, I can have some water or when I'm thirsty throughout the day, I have water that's easily accessible to me. It makes a world of a difference in how much water you're drinking if you have water within view, within arm's length because if you are wanting to drink more water yet you're too lazy to walk downstairs to the kitchen and grab water then you're more likely not to drink water if you're a person who's just really addicted to soda to juice you know just to carbonation and sweet stuff it's very important that you wean yourself off of those things like if you drink about six cups of soda a day how about you try drinking five cups of soda and then an extra cup of water so you're just creating a bit of a balance there and you're slowly incorporating more water versus completely just going cold turkey on soda and juice and then just drinking only water i'm not saying to go cold turkey because i feel like again if you go cold turkey on things it creates a more likely chance of you relapsing but if you're the kind of person who can really go cold turkey and not relapse then go you go you like i commend you but for the majority of us, I, I couldn't do that. Like I was addicted to soda, I was addicted to juice. I could not get myself off of it unless I did this method of weaning myself off of it. Back in the days before my health journey, I used to drink soda probably about 80% of the day. I think I would only have like two cups of water a day. So I was severely dehydrated. What I had to do was I had to Put in my head that okay you can only drink soda on special occasions and so i tried that method and i would substitute soda with juice and then eventually i would substitute juice with water but as i did that i noticed more and more that i was making almost every day a special occasion because i'm like oh we're going to the movie so i need soda to drink with my popcorn or oh we're going out to eat so you know i need soda to wash down my food it just it got out of hand and it wasn't until i got to a day where i literally woke up the next day with such horrible chest pain and inflammation and I felt sick to my stomach that that was the point where I was all like you know what I need to take this more seriously so I literally had to stop drinking soda and stop drinking juice and I had to stick to that because nowadays like freaking, I choose water over absolutely everything I don't really care too much for juice or for soda or any kind of sweet drink what I crave all the time is just water. So as I started increasing my water intake, I noticed that I started to crave water more over juice and soda because I was now creating this habit of drinking water with my meals and waking up and drinking water. Another thing is, is what you can do, if, especially if you're just used to again like sweets and that carbonation, is to fortify your water in a way that can help to replicate those sorts of drinks but in a way that will actually provide nutrient value to you. One way that you can uh, counteract that craving is to substitute soda with like sparkling water and adding you know a couple of fruits in there and a bit of stevia just to sweeten it up a bit and that will help to wean yourself off of soda. A lemon to it. 
Lemon, everyone knows about lemon water. It is amazing because it's great for your digestion or your skin. It's great for just flushing toxins out of your body. But the more that you incorporate water into your diet, the more you begin to crave it. It's really just a process of retraining your taste buds to opt for water instead of soda. When it comes to eating healthier, it's important to start with the basics and work your way up. So that way you're not really shocking your system, but you're easing yourself into this new lifestyle versus, you know, completely jumping in and then realizing, oh, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. So you jump back up. Tip number two is to meal prep and plan. Now, I feel like this is so crucial to the success of your health journey. Why is that? Because if you do not plan it, especially plan it on paper, then you are destined to fail because it will just become a thought in your head like, oh, you know, it would actually kind of be nice to eat healthy today. And then you walk into the kitchen and you're just like, well, I don't have anything healthy to eat. So I guess I'm just going to eat this pack of ramen noodles and a bag of Doritos on the side. Huh, delicious. When it comes to meal prepping and planning, the best thing you can do is to write that down on paper or on the notes on your phone, whatever is easier for you. But the point is, is to make sure that you're actually writing it down just so that you can have a visual of what your meals for the week will look like. You know, set aside just any day of the week that works for you so that you can plan out every single day and break it down from breakfast, lunch, dinner to snacks. So that way you are setting yourself up to eat healthy for each of those meals. Another thing is, is to prep your ingredients for the week. This one. I know that there are a lot of us who are just prone to being lazy and want nothing to do with uh, cutting up a million vegetables to make dinner. So a great tip for this is to prep your ingredients for the week. To either chop up your veggies or even buy veggies that are already chopped up for you, especially if you know that you're someone who doesn't really like cutting up vegetables or peeling them, you know, at the store they already have most of those ingredients prepped for you. If you feel like that's much easier for you, then you know, you opt for that. Another thing is, is to set aside and make sure that you have all of those ingredients on hand for your meal prep. Because if you plan for success, then you are most likely to succeed. So that's why it's important to plan your meals for the week, prep your ingredients, and make sure that you have your meal plan somewhere where you can actually see it so that you can actually follow it as well. Yes. All right. What a break. Okay, this is literally like the hundredth take for today. All right. Okay. Side bonus tip right here, but it is to eat before you start feeling ravenous. I cannot stress this enough because when you're at the point of starvation, guess what? You're just going to eat everything within your pack like Godzilla. You will literally eat the pack of Oreos that's sitting on your counter, frozen burrito because it only takes two minutes to cook and prep and it's in your mouth. So that's why it's very important to eat before you start feeling ravenous or before you start feeling hungry so that way you can actually have a clear mind when it comes to eating. So tip number three is to swap with healthier alternatives. When people transition into eating healthier, they think that it's the most disgusting thing ever because when they think healthy, they think, oh, it's food with no taste and basically just eating grass all day. I'm like, no, no, that's not really how it is. You can actually season your food with really good seasoning and have it actually taste like the real thing. Nowadays, our shelves are stocked with a plethora of health alternatives. There are alternatives to absolutely everything. I kid you not. Like stores nowadays compared to like years ago are stocked with so many different alternatives to things like ketchup, ranch, 
to pasta noodles, to candy bars, to cooking oils, soy sauce, and all kinds of things. Like if you're used to eating something or cooking with something that isn't probably as good for you, there is an alternative for it. You just gotta look for it. And there are a lot of health stores that you can go into and even nowadays, Walmart is stocking their shelves with all things organic, all things healthy. So it's not difficult to find an alternative to what you're looking for. You just gotta keep your eyes open and look for it. Tip number four is to stock your pantry with healthy options. This goes hand in hand with the, the last tip, but when it comes to stocking your pantry with healthier options, it's important that you have healthy options, but that they're within view. So when you're stocking your pantry or like when you're filling up your pantry, with healthy foods and healthy snacks, it's important to put it within your line of view. So as soon as you open that door, that is what you see. It's not a good thing if you open the door and you see a pack of cookies and a bag of chips staring right back at you, especially when you're hungry, and then you're just like, you know what, I'm gonna just have a little snack, and then that snack turns into the whole bag. Yes, I know, because I've been there a million times. Or you're over there stocking your top shelf with all of the good healthy stuff and then yet yeah, below as soon as you walk into the pantry that's all you see are just like the junk food so it's very important that your pantry is well organized to where you can actually see all the good stuff and not see all the bad stuff above so try to tuck that stuff up at the top or in non-clear baskets so that you don't reach for those first. So something else to go along with this is if you live in a household where your most of your family or your roommates don't eat healthy, then this is absolutely crucial for you to make sure that you have a section in the pantry or in a cupboard somewhere to where you have your healthy snacks and your healthy foods because if you do not designate an area to where your eyes automatically divert to then your eyes are gonna be all over the place and be like oh yeah you know what that looks good that looks good versus I have the middle section of the pantry so as soon as I open the door you know that's all I look at that's all I see and that's all I really want to eat there you go that's what I do. I have like a, a cart in my pantry to where I put all of my healthy food so that when I go in, I'm just so used to it to where I look at my cart or I look at parts of the pantry where I have my healthy food. It's like a force of habit to look in those areas versus my eyes wandering above. I'm just like, mm. no. So tip number five is the Fab Four mindset. When it comes to eating healthy, a lot of people struggle because they don't know what healthy really is. They think that it's just, you know, eating a bed of greens or eating a bowl of spinach. They don't know what is considered a balanced, healthy meal. A couple of years ago, I came across this book from the library and it's called The Fab Four. And basically, this author, she goes on to talk about what is considered a healthy meal and the four components that makes up a balanced healthy meal that doesn't spike your insulin levels and helps to keep you full for a lot longer. If you're struggling with knowing what a balanced meal is, like the fat four mindset is basically what you can follow to ensure that your meal is actually healthy balance. The four components of making up a healthy meal is to have a good source of protein, healthy fats, fiber, and greens. So it's very important when you're trying to meal plan is to keep that in mind when you're building your meals. It's important to have at least one source of each of those things on your plate so that you are creating a balanced meal. So yeah, moving on. Okay, so tip number six is to drink more smoothies and green juices. With this, I feel like these are easy ways to eat healthier. Like for example, when it comes to smoothies, it's so easy to just throw everything in there and have it taste like heaven, as long as you're throwing in the right things in there. Cause you know, I've had a lot of bad tasting smoothies and these are some of the easiest things that you can do to start eating healthier and just feeling healthier overall. You just throw some spinach in there, berries, some protein powder, almond milk, and all of this good stuff and you're just drinking it in one cup versus having to prep 
20 different things to get those nutrients. So if you're looking to get nutrients quickly and to really hit that fab four is to make a smoothie. Like it's so simple as that. Or to make a green juice because I feel like with these, they're so much easier for your body to digest and they're so easy to make. And smoothies, I incorporated this very early on in my health journey because I wasn't really huge back then on eating like a whole bowl of fruits or eating salads because I just felt like eh, that wasn't really me. So I felt like one of the easiest things for me was to make a smoothie so I can throw in some greens, I can throw in my fruits, I can throw in you know everything else under the sun and have it taste good yet I am fueling myself with nutrients that would be difficult for me to get if I had eaten those things individually. So yeah, but try adding smoothies. Tip number seven. Okay, I'm not gonna say that this one's important because they're all important. But tip number seven is to make sure to pack a healthy snack on the go. When you are out working or you're just running an errand or whatever and you're hitting starvation level, then it is so important that you have a snack with you so that you can turn to that versus going out to buy a snack. And so if you know that you're going to be out on the road all day or you're just gonna have a pretty busy day and you just won't have time to make a meal, it's important that you either pack a healthy meal or you pack healthy snacks to hold you over until your next meal so that way you're not stopping at a gas station or whatever and buying a bag of chips and a hot dog. Done that before. That's why I'm letting y'all know it's important to pack a protein bar or you know like a Tupperware of fruits in your bag so that you have that to reach for versus going out and buying unhealthy options because you're crammed on time and you're hungry. So just keep that in mind. Tip number eight is to be mindful of ingredients lists. When it comes to buying packaged healthy snacks or foods or whatever, it is important that you read the ingredients labels because here it will help you to determine whether something's actually healthy or not. Just because something says that it's organic and gluten free and grain free and all of that jazz, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's healthy. It's very important that you are able to understand what is actually in it and if those ingredients are actually healthy. A great rule of thumb when it comes to buying healthy snacks or healthy uh, packaged foods is to ensure that there are less than 10 ingredients on the label. If there's any more than that, then that's a little suspicious. Now, the exception though when it comes to that is if there are more than 10 ingredients is that you are able to pronounce every single one of those things and what they are because I have seen labels where they list about 20 different ingredients but they were in fact all healthy and mainly just like spices and different seasonings that was adding to the list of ingredients. I have seen literally 30, probably 40 ingredients go into a bag of chips. I think it was like Doritos or something or maybe I'm just over exaggerating but there are crazy things that go into these foods that a lot of other countries don't even allow but here in the US I noticed a lot of packaged foods that list so many ingredients on them and I don't even know what most of those ingredients are let alone how to pronounce them. So it's very important that when you shop for healthy foods is to actually look at the ingredients label and make sure that you know what is actually going into it, how it's being processed because all of that is about to go into your body. So it's very important to just look out for that. All right, tip number nine, subscribing to healthy meal kit deliveries. Now, today we have so many different companies who are coming out with their own meal kit subscriptions that you can get on to. There are just a plethora of meal kit deliveries that you can subscribe to in which they would send prepped ingredients in a box to your door and all you have to do is follow the easy and quick recipe and there you go. Oh shoot. And oh my gosh, I'm literally about to destroy my whole room. Okay. And just like that, you'll have a healthy meal prepared in your own home by your own hands. So, I mean, 
it doesn't get any better than that. They are freaking amazing. They make like these chef curated meals and you're over here prepping it like, dang, you a chef too, sis. Like that's how easy it is. And the meals that you can select are so healthy. Like they have different meal plans that will fit your needs and especially if you don't know how to make healthy meals or where to even start then it's probably a good idea to hop onto one of those subscriptions so at least you can experience different meals and how to make them and then you can always make like your own version of them in the future so yeah all right we have made it to the end with tip number 10 okay that rhymed <laughs> so tip number 10 is intuitive eating if you don't know what intuitive eating is it's basically listening to how your body reacts to certain foods it's being in tune with your body and knowing what your body likes and what it doesn't so when it comes to eating healthier i'm not saying to eat everything that is considered healthy under the moon because every body is different so what may work for me may not work for you it's just how our bodies digest certain foods and you just have to try different things try different foods and see if it works for you if you're eating something and it makes you feel like complete crap and you've tried it over and over again and you're getting the same results then you know it's probably just not good for you so maybe try something else it's just really listening to your body and what it needs and what it's telling you because you want to be giving your body the best nutrient value that you possibly can but you don't want to be causing more issues because you're over there eating something that is considered healthy but your body just isn't sitting well with it if that makes any sense Okay. Yeah, the gist of it is to eat food that actually makes you feel good inside. What you ingest or what you consume impacts the way that you function. So if you're trying to be full of energy rather than sitting on a toilet for like hours, then it's important <laughs> to eat foods that make you actually feel energized, that make you actually want to do things and not feel sluggish all day long. It's very important for you to eat foods that your body is actually craving, not your mind, not your taste buds cravings, but what your body is craving. Oh my gosh, we finally made it to the end. I hope that you guys enjoyed these tips. And before I end this video, I just want to say one quick thing I learned from a YouTuber back in the days that has stuck with me forever. She is amazing, Miss Cambria Joy. In one of her videos, she shared something that has stuck with me for the longest time that it is about moderation, not deprivation. Like these tips that I've shared with you guys, I'm not saying that you need to strictly follow it and this is all you can do. No, it's all about eating a balanced diet. I'm not saying that you need to eat 100% healthy all day, every day, because to me that's just not sustainable. If you can do that, amazing. I, I commend you again. Because the goal here is to eat sustainably, to eat a diet that actually i hate using the word diet because it's not really a diet but to eat in a way that is realistic for you and in a way that actually creates a positive relationship with food i don't want you to go and try these tips and then be like oh i can never ever in my life eat a hershey's bar ever again i cannot eat a piece of cake anymore or i can't drink a cup of soda anymore like, to me, that's just not sustainable. Yes, as you continue to eat healthier, you'll just no longer crave those things. So that's great. But if you feel like you have to create this mindset where it's a I can't have it versus I don't want to have it, at that point, you're creating a negative relationship and negative perspective on food. Like if you guys have ever heard of the 80-20 rule, it's basically where you can eat 80% healthy and then 20% maybe non-healthy. It's all about balance and you can adjust that scale to whatever fits your needs. I'm not saying that you start 80-20 right now, no, but you can work towards that. And the more you eat healthy, the more you no longer crave unhealthy foods. It's about moderation, not deprivation. Instead of saying, I can't have that, eventually your mind or your body would be like, I don't want to have that because it makes me feel sick. Or I don't want to eat that because then I'm just going to feel sluggish and don't want to do anything all day. It's okay 
to take your time when it comes to eating healthier so that you can do it in a more realistic and sustainable way because that's the goal here is to eat healthier it's not some fad diet that you go on for just 30 days no it's just you trying your best to incorporate healthy things one step at a time and you can take as much time as you possibly can you're not being rushed in any way i really urge you guys to try them out like just try at least one tip this week and work your way up to trying others it's all about baby steps and that is it those are all of my 10 tips on how you can start eating healthier but i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found some inspiration actually try implementing some of these tips into your journey because eating healthier it just makes you feel better overall and that's just what i want is for people to start feeling better to not feel like they have to be sick all the time or to feel sluggish all the time because it sucks it really does but eating healthier does make a difference in how you live your life but if you did like this video make sure to hit the like button down below because it'll help support my channel and do make sure to comment down below with any other tips that you think can help others to eat healthier as well that i may have missed in this video because i know there are a million tips out there and do not forget to subscribe because i will be making more videos like this in the future but until that next video thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it and i will catch you guys soon bye oh my gosh I'm doing the most here literally talking to a camera does not come naturally to me okay so i'm trying some slack. anyways hi uh i've already done that You've already done that. I need a pen. Hmm. Okay. All right. And people are making a uh, rewind. Girl, get your ish together, please. Please, please, please. Okay. Okay. Been about creating one for years now. I'm feeling. What is with the freaking hand? freaking gang signs chill i totally understand i don't know why i'm doing this like i like to talk with my hands i'm very uh what's the word i am very expressive no chill <laughs> i'm getting so tired okay i've been at this forever and i feel like my hair is about to catch onto one of these lights and it's gonna be it's gonna be lit as a fire up in here All right, let's just film this already. This is nerve wracking, not gonna lie, not gonna lie. This is new for me. This is new to me. So, uh, now, if you- I've been doing this for like 10 minutes now. No, not 10 minutes, like 10 hours. Okay. Anyways, I can't breathe. I can't breathe, I'm so nervous. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's, let's try that again. Let's take this back to take 22. Let's roll it back. Okay. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm so confused as to what to say right now because I don't usually talk to a camera this much. All right, here I am. <sighs> oh, I feel about that.